But let's tell you what we have lined up for you on Trendspotting today. First, what aided emphasis uh, strong numbers, we will ask the CEO Nitin Rakesh and the CFO V. Surya Narayan. And then we will decode the fourth quarter numbers for Magma Fincorp as we connect with the CFO Kailash Bahiti. All right, so let's get to it. We have emphasis, which is again also hit lifetime highs today, uh, and it's jumped as much as well, 10% for now. And uh, this, this is after, of course, it's reported very strong numbers coming in. What are the key factors, and what are we expecting for the upcoming financial year? We spoke, we are, we're in conversation with the management, uh, Nitin Rakesh, who is the CEO as well as the CFO, V. Surya Narayan. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, Nitin, I'm going to start off with you. Can you tell us about the deals that you've signed? And as we understand, is new generation, which contributes to ever over 80% of the revenues, is now in focus, uh, what kind of implications can your new deals that you signed in the fourth quarter have on financial on the upcoming financial year? I think uh, you know consistently now uh, four quarters in a row we are starting to see uh, 80 plus percent of our new wins coming from what we call new gen services. What that basically means is we are applying some form of transformation to uh, you know our clients' businesses. Uh, in many cases, uh, transformation that starts in front of the customer, uh, so customer-centric, you know, deploying consumer tech, looking at analytics and data to drive personalization, uh, you know, starting to look at uh, you know, how we drive a higher percentage of cross-sell. Uh, and at, at the same time, how can we actually help them transform their core uh, you know, uh, systems and operations? And, and that has an element of cognitive automation, transformation, cloud migration, and, and all of those. So I think from that perspective, this continues to be a high-growth market. This business has actually grown almost, uh, you know, 50% on a YOY basis. 43 plus percent of our direct core business now comes from next gen services. So I think this is uh, this is really the right kind of growth in the right areas with the right momentum. Surya, you raised your targets for margins for FI19 to 15 to 17%. Uh, what are you factoring in when you have raised these uh, targets when it comes to uh, operational uh, performance? Right in FY18, we had initiated various steps to improve our margins, uh, various including productivity and uh, business model into fixed price, etc. And these are all playing out well. And uh, as you see, uh, you would have observed quarter on quarter, we had increased uh, the margins, EBIT margins. And uh, so we are confident of the new revised band of EBIT for FY19 between 15 to 17 percent. And Nitin, what kind of work are you carrying out for HP and DXC now? Uh, what kind of projects are you working with with them? We called out uh, this time last year the fact that uh, we were going to use the long-term agreement and our, and our partnership to essentially catapult us into a into a different uh, you know positioning. And from that perspective, we announced a partnership for application transformation, cloud migration with DXC. We are very pleased with the results of that partnership. I think we've created a tremendous amount of value for both companies, uh, and that was the reason why we were able to grow that business in healthy double digits uh, over the last 12 months. We think there's a long-term opportunity in continuing to drive uh, application transformation, uh, as well as uh, what we call core service transformation. Uh, we saw good, good uptick in the U.S. with DXC. We started to expand that to other regions uh, of the world. At the same time, we still think we have a long-term mining opportunity with other HP entities, uh, most notably HP Enterprises and HP Inc., and we think we should continue to make investments in growing that through the remainder of this year and next. Surya, what kind of investments have you earmarked for the upcoming financial year? Uh, the reason why I ask is that if you have also upped your margins guidance for this FY, in that case, will your investments not have any bearing whatsoever when it comes to your return ratios? The services we render, especially in the new gen, uh, requires a lot of investments in the house for a platform on the digital side of the business. So when we have, uh, you know, advocated the margin band for FI19, we have factored these investments. Nitin, we were in conversation with a lot of your other peers and there is still a lot of talk about a lack of visibility in the banking financial services. Uh, people are still trying to figure out what they exactly want. Uh, how are you reading your business in this particular vertical right now? Most of the growth coming out of banking will not be in traditional IT, but it will actually be more in transformation or, 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 uh, or digital or new gen services. 
because almost every bank that we know of uh, has a highly optimized back office core IT business. However, they're all, all trying to stay ahead uh, when it comes to investing in front of the consumer uh, or in creating services and offerings that are highly customized. So I think there will be a long-term growth opportunity in digital and next-gen services for banks uh, as well as financial services companies. But uh, if you have those services, if you have the ability to, to help you know, partner with them, help them deploy consumer-facing tech, help them adopt digital you know, transformation that starts in front of the customer, then you will actually see good growth. And that's kind of what's happening with our business. In this particular quarter, there's also this trend that while there has been slackness in America, there has been a lot of growth in Europe. And we've been seeing this across the Indian IT industry in general. What sort of conversations are you having with your clients in Europe specifically? In innovation, uh, adoption is higher on the other side of the continent in, in North America. Uh, and and that, as that starts to mature and, and starts to get scale, uh, you know, there is a, a, a fast-following approach in Europe. And even within Europe, the approach is very different in different markets. Uh, you know, UK is very different from continent, uh, especially Northern Europe is very different from France. So I think it's no, not one size fits all in Europe. So for us, our European strategy is very, very country-specific. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think the, the global themes are pretty consistent and common. And the themes really being that to avoid disruption that is coming from tech, you have to continue to invest with, in front of your consumer in enhancing the customer experience and personalization. And uh, Nitin, what about the challenges with respect to direct international, specifically digital risk? Because uh, we've seen the company, uh, well, should I say struggle with this particular area. How is the company addressing some of these issues? I think we've done two things. We used most of FI18 to stabilize our profitability profile, and actually to stabilize our top line and, and, and improve our profitability profile. So we're very pleased with the fact that we've gone from mid-single digit to, to low teens in, in EBIT num uh, number. And from that perspective, I think the opportunity is pretty, pretty uh, uh, you know, interesting for us to now focus on how can we leverage the client relationships we have there? How can we actually synergize? And, and for, the, for that reason, we've also announced a one emphasis approach where we are taking a customer-centric go-to-market versus a unit-centric or a, or a division-centric. So we do believe there is opportunity in those, in those customers. Uh, we just have to continue to find ways to, to, to win a higher wallet share, something that we do very well in direct course, so we want to replicate the same with, with the other customers. So Surya, a word on your expectations on margins. What are the possible challenges that could actually challenge uh, you being able to sustain these margins, that you, the, the ones that you have predicted? And uh, what are the potential adversely impacting factors out there when it comes to margins going in? So uh, as you are aware, we have follow a very consistent hedging policy. Our hedges uh, for FI19 have already been done and they are already displayed in our MDNA. And uh, so, uh, yes, the dollar rupee movement has uh, some impact on our financials, but that is marginally considering the fact that we are fully hedged. Uh, beyond that, uh, apart from any, you know, very one time exceptional issues which can come, we are quite confident of the uh, EBIT margin which we have uh, laid out for FI19. Okay, Surya and Nitin, thanks for joining us and uh, well, giving us an outlook on emphasis of one, in terms of what we can expect for uh, the upcoming financial year. So it certainly has been uh, well, a good quarter, there's no doubt about the fa that, uh, but uh, investors are, well, they seem to be happy about the fact that the company has actually upped its margins guidance to 15 to 17 percent, the best so far that the industry has provi the provided for. So and that's also the reason why it is currently trading at lifetime highs up as much as five and a half percent. But uh, what about Magma Fimcourt, uh, Shadda, how's that been? So Agam, um, you know, apart from it being a good quarter for the company, what has also happened is that we